Okay. Let's start chapter one, equations and inequalities. Section 1.1, linear equations and rational equations. So first, let me give you some properties of equality. Uh, an equation will involve a equality, so uh, properties of equality. So first, uh, for all real numbers A, B, and C, we have the following. The reflexive property. Well, the reflexive property says that every real number is equal to itself. So for every real number A, A is equal to A. We have the symmetric property. If a real number A is equal to a real number B, then B is equal to A. So in symbols, A equaling B implies B equals A. The transitive property. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. In symbols, A equaling B and B equaling C implies A equaling C. It's the substitution property. In symbols, it says that, well, if A is equal to B and P is a statement in the indeterminate A, then P is a statement in the indeterminate B having the same truth value. So if A equals B and if P is a statement uh, that is true in A, then P is also true in B. Whereas if the statement P is false in A, then P is also false in B. In other words, if A equals B, then any statement in A will have the same meaning in B or the same truth value in B. A linear equation is equation of the form AX plus B equaling zero. And so this is a linear equation in the variable x. And so it's just some linear function, L of x equaling zero. So where L is a linear function in the, in the, in the um, elementary algebra sense of what we mean by uh, a linear function. The additive property of quality. So the way that we will solve linear equations is to use some properties of equality, the additive property of quality and the multiplicative property of quality. So first, the additive property of quality. If we have a statement A equals B, then a plus C is equal to B plus C. So uh, you can add or subtract the same quantity to both sides of your equation and, the, uh, and you get an equivalent statement. So the truth value of the statement will not change. Similarly, we have the multiplicative property of quality. If A is equal to B and if C is non-zero, then A times C is equal to B times C. And similarly, A divided by C is equal to B <laughs> divided by C. So if you have any statement, then you can multiply or divide by a non-zero constant, and that will not change the truth value of the statement. Um, before I go on to actually solving equation, uh, let me classify equations. And so we will say that equation is a conditional equation. If you can solve for the variable, let's call the variable x. And if you're able to say, well, x is equal to some number, then we say it's a conditional equation. So almost every equation that we will be dealing with 
in this course will be a conditional equation. It'll be that you can solve it. So if you can solve it, it's called a conditional equation. An identity. If you, when you try to solve an equation, well, you eliminate the variable and you get like a number is equal to the same number. Then we call it an identity. In general, an identity will have an infinite number of solutions. So they'll have, have an infinite number of to the equation uh, that will make it a true statement. There may be some uh, numbers where it's not a true statement, but in general, uh, you'll have an infinite number of uh, numbers where it will be a true statement. A contradiction. If, again, you uh, try to solve an equation and all of a sudden you find that the variable is gone, um, then you have maybe a number e equals another number. So there's no variable. It's just, you know, 12 is equal to three. Well, we call that a contradiction. And so if you, if you have a contradiction, then your equation will have no solution. Let's do some examples. First, uh, let's do on page 93, problem number 10. Each quantity uh, represents a real number. Find any restrictions on the variable x. So uh, I'm multiplying x by half. Well, you can always multiply any number by half. I'm subtracting seven from it. Well, you can always subtract seven from anything. And you can say, well, it's equal to some number, 14. So there are no restrictions on x. So therefore, so no restrictions on x. X can, could take on any value uh, which satisfies this equation. So I don't have any sort of, uh, you know, I can't say, well, X can't be zero because I'm dividing by, by X or something. Or maybe X. X can't be negative because I'm trying to take a, a rational equation is just a, a rational expression equal to zero. And so if you can put a equation in this form, we call it a rational equation. So let's do problem 16. One over x squared minus three x minus four is equal to five over x uh, plus two. So let's look at my restrictions. So I don't want that this is equal to zero, nor do I want that this is equal to zero. So I don't want to divide by zero. So I don't want x squared minus three x minus four to be zero, nor do I want x equal to zero because both of those are in the denominator. Uh, let me factor x squared minus three x minus four into x minus uh, well, first off, so this is a monic quadratic trinomial. So uh, let's write x is here, drop down the minus, times minus is plus. I want two whole numbers whose product is four and whose difference is three, so four and one, and I put the, the uh, root with larger absolute value first. Set each factor to zero and solve for x. Add four to both sides, so x is equal to four. Subtract one from both sides, so x is equal to negative one. So therefore, um, the restrictions are, well, x cannot equal zero, nor can it equal negative one, nor can it equal positive four. So when you try to solve this equation, you do not want x to be any of these three values. When you solve the above equation here in problem 10, well, 
it's okay. Whatever you find, then, then there's no restrictions. There's no saying, well, that can't be a solution. But here, if you try to solve it and you find X is zero, well, that can't be a solution. You've got to get rid of that. Okay, so problem number 20. Solve each equation, if possible. Classify each one as an identity, a conditional equation, or a contradiction. So let's do this. So first, uh, let me multiply three, two, inside the parentheses. So I get three m plus six equals two m plus six plus m. Combine like terms. Subtract 3m from both sides of my equation. Trying to isolate my variable m on one side of my equation. And so I get 6 is equal to 6. So I've eliminated my variable. So, so this will not be a conditional a a conditional equation. It'll either be an identity or contradiction. So first off, well, six is equal to six. That's a true statement. So this is a true statement. And since it's a true statement, then this means that this is an identity. Okay. And we see that uh, we don't have any restrictions on, oops. How did that happen? Here, wait one second. Okay. <laughs> Will you stop? Okay, there. I got back what I wanted. Okay, so this is a true statement. So this is identity, and there were no restrictions on my variable. Therefore, my solution is all real numbers. So x is any number between plus infinity and minus infinity. Uh, not, not x, I'm sorry. Our variable was called m. And so it can be anything, any number between plus or minus infinity. Let me do problem number 27. Uh, let me try to simplify this. So let me get rid of the denominator. Help me make my life easier. So let me multiply both sides of my equation by b minus three. So three is equal to one times b minus three. Add three to both sides of your equation. And so b is equal to six. There's only one solution, therefore this is a conditional equation. Solve each equation. If an equation has no solution, so indicate. Okay, so in this case, let me Multiply both sides of my equation by three. So the threes cancel. You get three x minus two is equal to three times two, six x plus seven. Subtract three x from both sides of my equation. Subtract seven from both sides uh, from both sides of my equation. Divide by three. So x is equal to negative three. And that is your answer. Notice there's no restrictions on X, just like in the first problem we did. Uh, let's do problem number 56. And so let me multiply both sides of my equation by the least common denominator, X, X minus two. And so the X minus twos cancel, I get three X. The X's cancel, so I get x minus two, the x minus twos cancel, so I get, and maybe I'll just write this. Oh, 
ass. <laughs> okay, let me. Uh, let me. <laughs> okay. Let me. Uh, let me uh, divide both sides of my equation by x, and so this is just x minus two is equal to. Let's cancel both sides of my equation uh, by x minus two. So I just have three x. <clears throat> so I just have three x here. Uh, combine like terms, so I have four x minus two is equal to three x. Subtract um, four x from both sides of my equation. So you have negative two equals negative x. I let both sides of my equation here by negative one. And so I just have that x is equal to two. Okay, so let me do problem number 76. So solve each formula for the specified variable. So let's do that. So first off, let me get rid of the, uh, and I guess the variable that I'm solving for uh, is H. So I wanna solve this for H. So let me multiply both sides of my equation by three. And so I get three V equals pi R squared H. Next, let me divide both sides of my equation by pi R squared. And so I get that H is equal to 3v over pi r squared. And that is your answer. Uh, let me do, oops, one second. Actually, let me give a little bit more space here for this. Uh, let me do problem number 86. And so I wanna solve this equation for R1. Okay, so I wanna solve this for R1. Wait one second. So let me multiply both sides of my equation by R, R1, and R2 to get rid of all the denominators. And so I1 cancels. I just get, oh, darn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just get um, R1 times R2. Still, R1 times R2 equals the R1s cancel R times R1. R2s cancels, so it's R, R1. Oh, I'm sorry, that's an R2. <coughs> Let me subtract R, R1 from both sides of my equation. Uh, 
And so I get R1, R2 minus R, R1 equals R, R2. Let me factor out R1, oops, from the equation. That's R2 minus R equaling R, R2. Divide both sides my equation by R2 minus R. And so I get that R sub one is equal to R, R2 over R2 minus R. And that is my answer. <clears throat> and so that solves um, that. So that's it for today. So uh, I guess I was gonna see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>